The Hardy-Weinberg equation is a mathematical model developed independently by English mathematician Godfrey Hardy and German physician Wilhelm Weinberg. Their mathematical model connects the individual level genetic phenomena of inheritance described by Gregor Mendel to the population level genetic phenomena of evolution described by Charles Darwin, which indicates its importance to evolutionary biology. To understand the model, we need to start by understanding some fundamental genetic concepts. Starting with the single chromosome, basic fundamental units of genetic information, or a gene, is found at a specific place or location called a locus on the chromosome. A cell that contains only a single set of chromosomes is called haploid, symbolized by the letter N. Cells of many organisms contain pairs or two sets of matched homologous chromosomes. These cells are said to be diploid, symbolized by the symbol 2N. A gene at a particular locus can have different molecular forms that contain different genetic information. These different forms are called alleles. For example, one allele for our hypothetical gene may have the sequence of bases in the DNA of AGCTGA. If a mutation causes this sequence to change to ACCTCA, this would represent a different allele. Let's continue by considering an example in which there are two alleles designated as big A and little a for a particular gene. As mentioned earlier, many cells are diploid and contain two copies of an allele. The combination of alleles in an individual is called the genotype. If the alleles are the same, the genotype is called homozygous. If the alleles are different, the genotype is called heterozygous. How the alleles and combinations of alleles affect the features of an organism is called the phenotype. Suppose the big A allele codes for a blue color pigment in the organism and the little a allele codes for a red color pigment. Under complete dominance, both the homozygous big A and heterozygous genotypes produce the blue phenotype. Only the homozygous little a genotype produces the red phenotype. Under incomplete dominance, both the homozygous genotypes produce the blue and red phenotypes respectively. The heterozygotes, however, produce an intermediate purple phenotype. All of the individuals in a population contribute to what is called the gene pool or the collection of all the genetic variation present in that population. This diagram shows a hypothetical population of males and females, their genotypes, and their phenotypes under the incomplete dominance scenario. Let's consider how these individuals will contribute to the gene pool of the population through the process of meiosis. In meiosis, diploid cells give rise to haploid gamete cells through a series of cell division steps. If the individual is homozygous big A, for example, all of their gametes will contain big A alleles. Homozygous little a individuals will also only produce little a alleles in their gametes. But if individuals are heterozygous, half of their gametes will contain big A alleles and half will contain little a alleles. And this is what brings us to the Hardy-Weinberg equation. In this equation, the frequency of our big A allele indicated by P and the little a allele indicated by Q allow us to predict the probability of these different alleles coming together in eggs and sperm during sexual reproduction. The probability of big A alleles coming together is indicated by P square, the probability of heterozygotes is indicated by 2PQ, and the probability of homozygous recessive individuals is indicated by Q squared. The important point, however, is that these expected genotype frequencies will occur only if certain assumptions are met. The assumptions are large population size, random mating, no mutation, no selection, and no migration into or out of the population. If these conditions are met, the population will remain in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. In equilibrium, allele and genotype frequencies do not change from generation to generation. Let's now turn our attention to how you would determine the allele frequencies of a population. Because you know the genotype of individuals based on their phenotype, under incomplete dominance all you need to do is count the alleles. What this means is that each homozygous individual represents two big A or two little a alleles, and each heterozygous individual represents one big A allele and one little a allele each. So, by counting up the number of individuals with different phenotypes, you can easily determine the frequency of the different alleles in the population by direct counting. Because homozygous dominant and heterozygous individuals cannot be differentiated under a condition of complete dominance, we have to use the frequency of homozygous recessive individuals to estimate allele frequencies. To do this, simply use the square root of the frequency of homozygous recessive individuals in the population. Subtracting this value from 1 gives an estimate of the frequency p for the big A allele. 
If you're studying a population and you find that it is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, this means that it has been subject to one of five different evolutionary forces, such as natural selection, non-random mating, mutation, genetic drift, or gene flow. These factors acting on a population will change allele and genotype frequencies from what the equation predicts. For example, let's consider a hypothetical population where we will use these two different colored beads to represent our different alleles. Their frequencies are indicated by P and Q, and in this example they start off as being equal. We combine them to make our gene pool. Mixing them and drawing two out at random, we first form a heterozygote, next to homozygous recessive, homozygous recessive, heterozygous, and continue this process until we ultimately have a population composed of 80 individuals. We can determine the allele frequencies in this population by counting up the numbers of individuals with different genotypes. The 20 homozygous big A individuals contain 40 big A alleles in them. The 40 heterozygotes have both 40 big A alleles and 40 little a alleles. The 20 homozygous little a individuals also have 40 little a alleles in them. When we add these up, we see that we have a total of 160 alleles, 80 of them big A and 80 of them little a. This meets our expectations under the model of equal allele frequencies and the expected frequencies of the different genotypes. This example again used incomplete dominance. However, if it had been a situation of complete dominance, the square root of the frequency of the homozygous recessive individuals would likewise bring us to a calculation of an allele frequency of 0.5. Let's next investigate what would happen if something were to act on this population, such as selection against all of the homozygous recessive individuals. This would require us to recalculate allele and genotype frequencies. Because the population size has changed to 60 individuals, we now have only 120 alleles. By counting up, we again can calculate the frequencies of the big A and little a alleles in this new population after selection. In this new population, there are a total of 80 big A alleles and 40 little a alleles. Calculating our new allele frequencies gives us an allele frequency of approximately 0.66 for the big A allele and 0.33 for the little a allele. If we plug these new numbers back into the Hardy-Weinberg equation, we can see how the change in allele frequencies of our new population will likewise result in a change in the predicted genotype frequencies. Comparison of these values to those from our original population show how violation of one of the assumptions of the Hardy-Weinberg model can lead to a change in the allele and the genotype frequencies. Let's consider one final example. In this case, we have only homozygous individuals, and their number and frequency does not change across generations. Although the allele and genotype frequencies do not change, because there is a significant difference between the observed and expected number of heterozygous and homozygous individuals, this population is clearly not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. One of the assumptions of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium has been violated, indicating that an evolutionary force has been acting in some way on this population. So how do all of these concepts relate to one another? You'll remember from basic Mendelian genetics that if you have a cross between two heterozygous individuals, you can draw a Punnett square to predict the outcomes of this cross. So, in this example, we draw our Punnett square and place the two different alleles across the top and the side representing the male and the female. We combine them to show all of the possible genotypes in their offspring. Now consider what happens under the Hardy-Weinberg model. In this situation, we change the alleles with their frequencies of P and Q. Again, filling in the Punnett square, we see all of the different probability outcomes for these crosses. This shows how events at the population level described by the Hardy-Weinberg model are based upon events at the individual level described by basic Mendelian genetics. This likewise demonstrates how evolution, or the changes in population allele frequencies, is an emergent property of events occurring at the individual level through inheritance and Mendelian genetics.